Stanley, Scuba, Sailing, and Adventures. Today I got this giant box from Chasing in the mail and inside is the Gladius Mini S underwater drone. So I'll open the box, we'll go through all of the contents and I'll put it together and we'll get it in the water and test it out and see how it does. Let's dig in. I have so many ideas for how I'm going to use this and I'll share those throughout the video. A couple cool things called out right here on the front of the box, the four hour runtime, the 100 meter depth rating, and the 4K f1.8 aperture camera. One of the first applications for the drone that comes to mind for me is the search and recovery capability. If you drop something small off the dock and you don't want to put on all your scuba gear to go and get it. This, of course, is the drone itself, the Gladius Mini S. And we'll keep digging into the box here and see what's next. Here we have the tether to connect the remote control to the drone itself. It's my understanding that floats. And here we have a sun shield for the remote control. Then we have the remote controller. We have this nice towel. and connection cables for the remote to your telephone and we have some paperwork charging cables looks like a dual charging cable a mount for a gopro yeah dual charging cable so you can charge the remote and the drone at the same time. Let's see what else do we have here? Some smaller parts. Looks like we have a cap and a cap with a whole bunch of O-rings, a set of four screws and a carabiner. Here on the top, that's where the micro SD card goes. This is a good sized drone and my immediate reaction is that it's of a solid construction, maybe a very thick or hard plastic, but it feels, feels solid. Here we have one, two, three, four, and five thrusters to power the drone. This cap is for connecting the power for the accessories like the grabber claw. And again, this port on top is for the SD card. The port on the rear is where you connect the tether to the remote control. Here's the camera and there are two lights. It's my understanding the lights have a low and a high power setting. Now for a quick run back through the inventory. Of course, there's a towel here that I have laying on the desk and here's the remote. Looks like we have some joystick controllers and an adjustable holder for the cell phone. I think you could fit an iPad in there, not sure. I'll have to give that a try. But there's some clips on the bottom. And on the remote itself, we have the mode button, the lock button, the light button, and then the indicators for connection and switching to 2G or 5G, and then of course the on off button. This is all sealed. I'm not sure you can remove the battery. And then we have some buttons on the front. On the right hand side, we have the button and wheel for operating accessories like the claw. And on the left hand side, we have the button for the camera and wheel for turning the drone up or down. Other ports include the port for the tether an HDMI cable, and the USB-C connection for connecting to the display device. 
whether that be your cell phone or tablet. I'm assuming you might be able to get a tablet into this. I'm certainly going to try. So you can see you can make some adjustment to the cradle's position. Here we have the power cable. There's a power pack and dual charging cables. And again, I believe that's so you can charge the drone and the remote at the same time. It's like a standard power brick that you plug the other piece of the power cord into. And I think we'll just try and stick that in right now. That seems like something simple enough that I don't need the instructions for. Unlike some of the other things that I get, I will absolutely read all of the operating instructions for the drone. Let's see what else we have here, a locking carabiner. And this locking carabiner clips onto the back of the drone and it holds the loop that's in the tether. Again, I will show that in the second video where I show everything assembled and show the drone's operation in the water. Let's see what else we have here. These four additional screws, no clue what they're for. I'm assuming maybe that plate on the bottom of the drone. And here we have a cap, a cover cap. Not quite sure what that's for. I think maybe the bottom of the drone. I don't know. And there's another cap here with a bunch of O-rings. But I will figure that out. They are different sizes, the two caps. And I think you can see here, one of them's a little thicker than the other, and they might be slightly different in diameter as well. And here we have connection cables for connecting the remote to your display device of choice. And it looks like we have three different cables here. We have a lightning connection to USB-C and we have a USB-C to USB-C and we have a USB-C to micro, I don't remember what that one's called. I haven't used it for a long time. Anyway, three different connection cables and I guess those are the display device ends. They want you to use a certain end of the cable, or maybe that's just to show you what the cable's for. Here's that sun visor for the remote. Again, very helpful. I bought a third party one for my air drone. And here we have the tether cable. This will be interesting. I'm wondering how I'll be able to manage the tether while driving the drone, maybe you take out a whole bunch of the tether before you get started. That will be a learning experience. Both ends look the same. The end with the loop is the end that connects to the drone and the loop is also connected to the drone via the carabiner. All right, we've got one more box from Chasing to open today, and this is the Grabber Claw B for the underwater drone. Some information right here on the outside of the box, 12 kilogram drag force, 120 millimeter opening and closing distance, a 2.8 second single opening and closing time, and it's made of an aluminum alloy material. Again, this is the Chasing Grabber Claw B. In the box, looks like we have some instructions on top, which again, I will read the instructions. And here we have the Grabber Claw. It's got a little weight to it. That's absolutely, uh, a heavy aluminum construction design feels very sturdy. Here's the attachment point where it attaches to the bottom of the chasing Gladius Mini S. And this port on the end, 
I'm assuming is where the power cable connects from the grabber claw to the drone itself. This claw feels very sturdy. It's definitely got a little weight to it. But it's got a scissor design where the claw actually goes through the other claw at the tip here. I don't know if you can see that very well. And there's a little like serration or um, grip to these claws as well. It gives the appearance that you'd really be able to get a hold of something and hold on to it tightly. Let's see what else we have in the box. Looks like we have a couple of little bags. This appears to be the cable, double-ended short cable, to connect the grabber claw to the drone. It appears to be a thoughtful design in that the cable is not extra long. Let's see if this cap fits. It doesn't seem to fit on those cables, but you know what? It fits perfectly here. So maybe that's just for storage. And then we have some thumb screws here, which I assume are for connecting the grabber claw to the drone because you'd want to use thumb screws so you could easily connect or remove the claw from the drone. Yeah, and they seem to fit right in those holes. This completes the unboxing for the Chasing Gladius Mini S and the Grabber Claw B. Up next, the assembly, operating instructions, and real world demo. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment.